Okay. La última. Okay. Uh, gracias, Carlos. Uh, so Carlos asked me to uh, be on this panel to talk about submarine cables. I am uh, Doug Midori from from um, as I say, Renesis. Uh, Renesis was acquired this year by Dyne, and so we've been renamed uh, Dyne Research. And so that is our new company uh, name. And um, the submarine cables on the on the sign here is my my topic here. So uh, I'm going to give an update on the submarine cable. Um, uh, projects going on in this region uh, very quickly because I only got a couple of minutes. Um, so I, this would be a, a slot for uh, a telegeography kind of style uh, update. In lieu of that, I'll do my best to approximate uh, what these guys would say. And um, uh, Alan and Tim from uh, telegeography has, have, have helped me out with that. Uh, so I, I do uh, uh, in my analysis with uh, with Dyne and formerly with Re with Renesis, uh, have focused a little bit on uh, on the impacts of submarine cables either cuts or uh, activations for this region. Last year I wrote about the ALBA-1 submarine cable coming active in Cuba, and then most recently the, uh, the cable uh, connecting Russia to Crimea and the, um, uh, the Ukraine area. So with that, um, I'm just going to run through um, eight projects that are uh, in the works right now in, uh, in this region, um, somewhat in order of their uh, ready for service date. That's RFS up at the top in each of the slides. Uh, the first here is the uh, America Mobile uh, AMX1 cable, um, and I've been looking at the, uh, 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 the Telmex subsidiaries throughout Latin America, looking for. A, I expect to see a, a big shift in transit when uh, when they connect up to this cable and start to get um, uh, transit from their parent company. So this is going to go all the way from Florida to Mexico down uh, the the um, uh, the east coast of of South America and Alcatel. Uh, is building that one. Uh, Cbras, the, the latest update here was in the last uh, month. Um, uh, they announced that the construction had begun on this cable. Uh, Microsoft uh, previously had also uh, announced that they had made a, a large purchase of, uh, of transit and capacity on this cable. This one's going to go, this is a US to Brazil direct uh, line. The PCCS cable also is in the works. This one's under construction, uh, going from uh, Florida through the Caribbean and then uh, down to um, yeah, down to Ecuador uh, after crossing through Panama. We'll see Alcatel out of France is constructing that one. Uh, the Brazil uh, Europe cable. This is the one announced earlier this year. Uh, um, in a reaction to uh, some of the uh, uh, the Snowden uh, NSA spying uh, revelations about a, a new route to connect Brazil to Europe without having to uh, traverse the United States. Um, Telebras and Isalink are, are working on that. Um, I don't think a, a submarine cable vendor has been selected yet. But that will connect Fortaleza to Lisbon, Portugal. Um, this uh, South Atlantic cable system, there's been a, a lot of uh, talk about trying to get a cable across the South Atlantic. There really isn't a major cable that goes there now. There's one that's outdated. Um, and uh, Angola Cables has been pushing pretty hard to get this, uh, this connection in place. And what that would do would be to connect uh, Brazil and, and uh, this region to uh, the west coast of Africa and from there to interconnect with SAT-3 or other uh, Western, West Africa cables to connect up to, um, uh, up to Europe and provide an alternative uh, path. Also, there's uh, plans in the works for in Angola to make a terrestrial connection across sub-Saharan Africa so they could just even cut out um, South Africa uh, if, they, if traffic needed to get from Brazil to South Asia or Southeast Asia. Uh, the hope is one day that will just traverse terrestrially uh, sub-Saharan Africa. So they've got their funder funding. Um, I think the vendor hasn't been selected yet, um, but those are that's one of the two uh, projects uh, going across the South Atlantic. The uh, this is going this is a this is a recent um, announcement here. This is the new Google cable going between uh, the United States and um, and Brazil. Uh, this was um, yeah this was announced earlier this month. So the details are are a little uh, sketchy. Even the name is, it's gone by a couple of different names in the last couple of weeks. Uh, Monet or uh, um, Cable of the Americas, depending on which uh, company uh, was was discussing the cable. But this was between Al uh, Google, Al Algar Telecom in Brazil, Antel, and Angola Cables. 
and Angola Cables is involved because they uh, would like to uh, interconnect this and, and Fortaleza into the SACS uh, cable headed for Angola and make that a, a larger system uh, to connect uh, the region to uh, both the United States and to Africa. And uh, even though that's just been announced to subcom the United States uh, submarine cable supplier is going to be the one that, to build that. Uh, South Atlantic Express was another cable that was competing, it still is competing with SACS uh, to be the first uh, South Atlantic uh, uh, submarine cable connecting uh, Brazil to Africa. Um, I think they are still still working on their funding, so there hasn't been a, uh, a vendor um, or a, a submarine cable supplier named yet in this, uh, in this project. And then uh, lastly, there's this uh, South America Pacific link. This is kind of a unique route. We haven't seen uh, somebody attempt this before, but this is to go up the, uh, the, east, the west coast of South America to Panama, and then from Panama out to Hawaii. And the hope is uh, in Hawaii, they'll be able to interconnect with the other submarine cables uh, that are in Hawaii crossing the ocean to the Far East. And that this, uh, this may serve a, a market that's not served, uh, this may serve a path that's not being served presently by uh, any submarine cables. So just as, as far as the evolution of uh, uh, cables in this region, um, these are the ongoing projects, but I think um, just to uh, wrap up, because I know time is short, um, if you looked at any of the telegeography forecast, uh, forecast for demand, you know, they track demand and, and, and traffic that's been going across uh, uh, transatlantic uh, or transoceanic uh, cables, and that, that demand has been uh, dropping off. Um, it's, not, it's still growing, but, it, but the rate of growth is slowing. And there's a lot of reasons for that. But one of the reasons is, is that the, uh, there's been a lot more um, effort in areas uh, like this one to have internet exchanges like some of my fellow panelists have been discussing. Uh, other local, local content, uh, um, local, local hosting in either newer CDN technologies or Google Global Caches, things like that, where the demand is actually, um, there's less demand. Even though the, the, the whole system is growing, there's less demand across those international links. And this actually is an area of concern for the submarine cable uh, they, uh, community. They'd rather have those, uh, a lot of demand on those uh, cables, but it's actually a, a, a sign of the maturity of the whole system uh, that more local traffic is staying local than it used to. And, um, and so the, um, uh, you know, the importance and the reliance of those international links um, maybe slightly less uh, than it had been in the past where those were uh, vital connections back to the US, uh, back to where most content was hosted for, for users in a region like this.